Everything around us generates data. Cell phones, CCTV cameras, browser search history, satellites, etc. All of these generate data. So this data is coming at a very fast speed and in very large volumes. And this is nothing but big data. In our previous videos, we have constantly been discussing about big data and the analysis of big data. We know that big data needs to be analyzed so that businesses can identify the trends and patterns, the current latest trends and patterns, so that they can take proper decisions and benefit their organizations. And we know that this in turn creates more data and the cycle of data analysis goes on and on. We have already discussed this in data analysis. Hello learners and welcome to Constant Learners and in this video we are discussing data mining and data pre-processing. We know that the data taken from multiple sources is raw unprocessed data. Okay, And we need to convert this raw unprocessed data into useful information. Why do we need to convert raw unprocessed data? Because this data is difficult to understand and thus we need to use some softwares or tools to understand this data and convert it into useful information so that it can be used by businesses to identify current trends and future outcomes. And this is nothing but data mining. Okay, converting raw and processed data using tools or softwares into useful information to understand trends and outcomes is data mining. Okay, now Whatever we search on the internet is constantly being monitored, okay? And these searches are used to profit the businesses. Let's understand this with an example, okay? For example, I have uh, searched for a yoga mat. I want to buy a yoga mat and I've searched for a yoga mat. Now, every time I use internet, I will be suggested uh, about yoga mats, okay? The ads will suggest me to buy yoga mats. How does that happen with the help of data mining? Also on Netflix or Amazon Prime, we are suggested by the, uh, the system to watch some movies or series. How do they understand that? They understand our choices with our previous uh, watch list and they suggest us the movies and series. That is data mining. And they sometimes suggest us the most famous or the most popular movies and series with the help of, again, data mining. So we are constantly being observed and everything that we are doing is constantly being monitored without our permission and without our knowledge. Okay, now let's see what are the steps of data mining. First, the data analysts store and manage the data. This data is then analyzed with the help of some softwares. And finally, the output of data mining is given in the form of graphs or tables. Okay, how the data is stored and how the data is managed, that is decided by the data analyst. They keep the current trends in uh, their minds. They keep current uh, user demands in mind and they store the data and manage the data with respect to that. And finally, the outcome is also with respect to the user's needs and user's requirements. Okay, so this is data mining. Now, data pre-processing is an important step in data mining. So, data pre-processing is a part of data mining. Okay, so if this is data mining, data pre-processing is a step of data mining. And what does data pre-processing do? It prepares the data for data mining. That means it converts the raw data into suitable form of data so that it is uh, suitable for data mining. Okay, so how does it prepare the data? See, when we collect the data, it is in raw format. Okay, from multiple sources, we are collecting the raw data. Now, this data has inaccuracy, incompleteness, inconsistency and it is an improper format. So, what is data pre-processing does? It cleans this data. It completes this data and it transforms the data into a proper format. Okay, so data preprocessor removes uh, all of these flaws and makes the data suitable for data mining. Okay, 
There are four steps of data pre-processing. First is cleaning the data, integration, reduction and transformation. Now, when uh, we collect the data, this data is in raw format, as we said. Now, this data also has faults, incompleteness and data cleaning has to be done to clean this incomplete, inaccurate data. After cleaning the data, now this data has been collected from multiple sources. So we need to integrate this data and we need to bring it together. Now when we integrate this data, it is in excessively huge volumes. Okay, So data reduction method is used to reduce the size of this data. Okay, Because data mining performed on large data sets is not as efficient as it is on reduced data sets okay also if the data is not in a proper format it needs to be transformed into a suitable format so that data mining can be performed now let's see data cleaning in detail in data cleaning any kind of incorrect faulty inaccurate or we can say inconsistent data is uh, corrected okay and incomplete data that means the data is missing that is completed Incorrect or faulty data can be uh, erroneous data at the time of generation, okay? Inconsistent data can be uh, like different naming conventions or different spellings at different places. So, there are two different spellings here, okay? So, that is uh, inconsistent data, okay? Now, there are five ways of cleaning the data. First is binning. In binning, what happens? The data is first sorted. Sorted means what? Arranged in a particular format either location wise year wise date wise okay and after the sorting of the data is done these segments are then handled separately okay this is one segment this is two segment third segment and fourth segment suppose in the third segment the data is incomplete or inaccurate then this complete segment the values the data of this complete segment will be replaced by a mean or average value of all the data values in this particular set okay then clustering means what bringing together similar kind of data okay and uh, whatever is not connecting to this cluster stays outside the cluster regression is a method where uh, some predicted values are used to complete the incomplete data okay or false data or wrong data in manual entry we uh, the missing data can be added manually uh, by either using a mean value or a probable value. Okay. Then global constant means what? Suppose there is a missing value. So we can write not available or NA in place of the empty cell or missing values. That is how we can complete this data. And ignoring the tuples. If suppose in a tuple there are multiple cells that are incomplete, multiple values that are missing. Suppose here we have data. And here we have data. But there are two cells or we can say three cells that doesn't have the data. Then we can completely ignore those tuples. Next process is data integration. Data integration means we are collecting the data from multiple sources. Now integrating this data and making a single data set for data warehousing is known as data integration. There are two ways of integrating the data. Uh, first is tight coupling and the other one is loose coupling. In tight coupling, what happens? The data is collected from multiple sources and stored at one particular location. Okay. And whenever the user queries the data, the answer is given from this particular location. But in loose coupling, what happens? The data is stored in their own source database and an interface is provided to the user. So that whenever the user queries the data, uh, the proper output can be given from that particular source database. Suppose the user is querying from this database. Okay, The output will be given from here only. So the data is not stored in another uh, location. The data is not combined or stored anywhere else. The output is given from the source database itself. That is data integration. Third one is data reduction. Now we know that Data processing is a step in data mining and data mining of large data sets can give us inefficient outputs. Okay? Thus, 
it is uh, advisable to reduce the volumes of the data okay and this can be done in four ways first one is dimensionality reduction in this some encoding mechanism is used to reduce the size of the data okay and this can lead to lossy or lossless reduction so when can we say that it is a lossy reduction see when the data is reduced suppose this is the data and this is the reduced output now when this reduced output is again combined to get the original data if we get the proper original data then we say that it is a lossless reduction but if the data is not exactly what it was before reduction then we say that it is a lossy reduction next one is the numerosity uh, reduction in numerosity reduction the actual data set is transformed into the data models okay it is represented in the form of data models okay like for example a tabular uh, data is transformed in the form of a graph okay so this is numerosity reduction then attribute subset selection means what suppose in a table there are multiple columns or multiple attributes now only selecting the attributes that are highly relatable is state attribute subset selection and discarding all the attributes that are not so important okay so selecting only the attributes that are highly relatable is attribute subset selection and finally data cube aggregation in the previous video of uh, multi-dimensional database we saw how we can create a data cube okay so data cube aggregation means what summarizing the data whatever data we have uh, collected summarizing it to create a data cube okay is known as data cube aggregation finally the fourth one is data transformation so data transformation is a process of transforming the data into suitable formats for data mining okay we know that we collect raw data raw data cannot be understood by uh, machines cannot be interpreted by the machines and they need to be transformed into suitable formats that can be done in five ways first one is smoothing uh, in smoothing we remove any kind of noise okay so this is what we do in data cleaning also so the processes used here are similar to what we use in data cleaning that is binning clustering uh, regression etc data aggregation also we uh, saw in the previous section that is data cube aggregation this is nothing but summarizing the data uh, to form data cubes then data discretization is an important concept we are going to uh, discuss this in the next video along with the data generalization but in short in data discretization what happens that a continuous or a complete attribute values are replaced by interval labels okay so this is an attribute in a table the values of this attribute are replaced by interval values or you can say interval labels okay that means we are reducing the uh, data in the attribute now when we are reducing the data and the attribute what are we doing we are uh, removing the details okay we are removing the details that means what are we doing we are generalizing the data okay when we are removing the details we are generalizing the data so obviously some um, uh, details about the data will be removed but this generalized data is far more suitable for data mining okay and data normalization means what in data normalization uh, this is done so that we can scale the values of the data in a particular range okay like for example uh, in a table we can have um, the attribute values can range from multiple uh, numbers okay like for example i have one here then 202 then 419 81 700 so these values are very random we can use some normalization techniques some formulas to change the range of these values okay we can either range them in between minus 1 to 1 or we can use the formulas to range it between 0 to 1 okay so that is known as normalization that means uh, changing the attribute values to uh, appear in a particular 
range or to scale in a particular range. Okay, uh, that is all about uh, data pre-processing and data mining. Data discretization and generalization is what we are going to discuss in the next video. Uh, I hope you have understood all the concepts here. You know, if you don't, you can always write them down in the comment section below. I will make sure to respond to you. And if you like the video, please share it with as many people as you can. Like the video, give it a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching.